A good day and welcome back to the MedGuru CDB YouTube channel. For this very short video, we're going to go over the must-knows about the concepts in genetics about your purine and pyrimidine metabolism, as well as the clinical disorders associated with these bases. Now let's have a quick overview regarding the concept of nucleic acids. Now always remember we have two types of nucleic acids, that's the DNA, then we have the RNA. The DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid, while RNA is ribonucleic acid. These are the properties we have to know regarding DNA and RNA and what is the difference. Now the basic backbone sugar for DNA is deoxyribose, while in RNA it's ribose. The pyrimidine base in DNA is CNT, it's cytosine and thymine, while in your RNA, the pyrimidine base is C and U, that's cytosine and uracil. Now I strongly encourage you to memorize that uracil can only be found in RNA. DNA is double-stranded, while RNA is single-stranded. Now, what about the must-knows you have to know and you have to bring with you to any examination? This is regarding your nitrogenous bases or your nucleotide composition. We have two types of bases, purines. Then we have the pyrimidines. Under the purines, we have adenine and guanine, while the pyrimidines, cytosine, thymine, and uracil. We just mentioned earlier that uracil is the pyrimidine in RNA. So your mnemonics here is purine, pure as gold. Purine is pure as gold, while pyrimidines is C-U-T, cut the pie. So remember, pure as gold, that's purine is A and G, that's adenine and guanine. Cut the pie, I emphasize on the letter U for your uracil, okay? Cut the pie is cytosine, uracil, and thymine. These are pyrimidines. Now here, this is your double-stranded DNA. There's one strand there, there's another strand here. While you can see RNA is single-stranded and emphasis on the uracil. Now, this should come out in your exam, your char gaps rule. Now, this is a verbatim definition lifted from your Harper's 31st edition of biochemistry. DNA from any cell in all organisms should have a one is to one ratio of pyrimidine and purine bases. So take note, one is to one ratio. That is what you bring with you to the boards. And the amount of guanine, that's G, should be equal to cytosine. And the amount of adenine is equal to thymine. So what is Chargaff's rule? One is to one ratio of pyrimidines and purine bases. G must be equal to C and A must be equal to T. So again, bring this to the exams. A equals T and G equals C. So one is to one ratio of your Chargaff's rule. So don't forget who goes with each other. A and T are always paired with each other and G and C are always paired with each other. Now some nomenclature lifted from your textbook. These are your bases. Adenine, guanine, cytosine, uracil, and thymidine. Once you add a sugar, it becomes a nucleoside. So adenine becomes adenosine. Guanine becomes guanosine. Cytosine is cytidine. Uracil becomes uridine. So this is your nucleosides. Now, quick summary. A base, a nitrogenous base, plus a sugar, plus a phosphate, this would now be called a nucleotide. So again, 
the components of a nucleotide, we have an inorganic phosphate, a simple sugar, and your nitrogenous base. Now let's quickly go over this very busy slide, but I just wanna highlight things you have to bring with you. If for example, your examination is five minutes from now. So this is ribose 5-phosphate. I hope everyone still remembers ribose 5-phosphate came from the pentose phosphate pathway. One of the functions of the pentose phosphate pathway is to provide ribose 5-phosphate for nucleic acid synthesis. Now from ribose 5-phosphate, you're going to form AMP, that's adenosine monophosphate, IMP, that's inosine monophosphate, and GMP, which is guanosine monophosphate. Now, I want everyone to pay attention to the right side. IMP becomes inosine. GMP becomes guanosine. Then, inosine becomes hyposanthine. Guanosine becomes guanine. Now, pay attention with hyposanthine and guanine because we have this very important enzyme, HGPRT, or your hyposanthine, guanine, phosphoribosyl transferase. I like calling HGPRT, HGPRT ACE. So you have here hyposanthine becoming IMP, that's HGPRT, guanine become GMP, HGPRT. Then we have hyposanthine becoming xanthine. This is where xanthine oxidase comes in, which is the last enzyme that converts xanthine to uric acid down here. So the rate limiting enzyme of uric acid synthesis is xanthine oxidase. So two enzymes to memorize for your exams, xanthine oxidase and HGPRT. So let's continue with your purine degradation to uric acid. So I want everyone to memorize this for your exam. The enzyme xanthine oxidase catalyzes the final conversions to uric acid. So if we look at this illustration down here, purine nucleotides and nucleosides, fast forward, will become hyposanthine. Hyposanthine will be converted to xanthine, and the enzyme there is the famous xanthine oxidase. Xanthine will also be further degraded or converted to uric acid and it's xanthine oxidase. Therefore, the rate limiting enzyme for uric acid metabolism or purine metabolism is your xanthine oxidase. Now I would like to remind everyone, once your uric acid is high, so you have hyperuricemia, you would present clinically with gout. Now, this is your clinical correlate, which surely will come out in your exams. The drug allopurinol, is a hyposanthine analog that inhibits xanthine oxidase. So allopurinol is used for the treatment of gout. Now, I would like to clarify, most especially for your pharmacology exam. Allopurinol is the drug of choice for chronic gout. Acute gouty attacks, your drug of choice is colchicine. Now, another drug which is gaining popularity. So you have your fiboxostat. This is another drug used to treat hyperuricemia or gout, and this inhibits also your xanthine oxidase. The advantage of fiboxostat over your allopurinol, there's lesser hypersensitivity reaction, particularly your Steven Johnson syndrome. Now, another clinical application, your Lesch-Nyhat syndrome. Now, please don't forget, I mentioned earlier two enzymes you have to memorize for purine metabolism. That was xanthine oxidase and HGPRTase. Now, the genetic disease, an X-linked disease, which has the absence of your HGPRTase, this is your famous Lesch-Nyhan syndrome. So Lesch-Nyhan syndrome usually presents with mental retardation. It also presents with self-mutilation and aggressive behavior. So mental retardation, self-mutilation, and aggressive behavior, and as well as hyperuricemia. Now, another clinical pearl is I want to mention 
this from your book, your dump, your deoxyuridine 5-monophosphate. This is dump. Dump will be converted to TMP or your thymidine 5-monophosphate. This is where the enzyme thymidylate synthase comes in. So thymidylate synthase, memorize this, converts dump to TMP. And don't forget, this is going to come out in your boards, 5-fluorouracil or 5-FU. This is the chemotherapeutic drug that inhibits thymidylate synthase, thereby inhibiting the synthesis of TMP. Now, let me quickly go over the concept of the Watson and Crick DNA model. Now, this is how your Watson and Crick DNA structure looks like. These are the characteristics. Number one, it's double-stranded. As you can see, there's one strand here on the right side, another strand on the left side. They are both anti-parallel. They form a helix, and it is right-handed. Now, please take note. The length of one complete turn of your Watson and Crick is approximately 34 angstrom. So when we talk about human DNA, it's the Watson and Crick model we are referring to. So with this, take time, review the video. Best of luck if you're in your examinations. God bless and thank you.